Hoy es viernes, yo soy Rory y estoy contento estar contigo hoy. Well, today's not just any Friday, it is the Friday before Mother's Day. And so I wanted to give us just a special shout out to all you moms, grandmothers, uh, and a special thank you. Thank you for all that you mean to uh, our families and your community. Uh, you know, you are powerful folks. You have the power to inspire, to console, to encourage, and of course, the power to do all the opposite of those things too. So thank you for all that you do for uh, your family, for our families, for our community. Uh, truly is, um, you truly are a, an essential and uh, meaningful, valuable part of, uh, of our society. So thank you. Uh, hopefully you get a chance to do something special and celebrate. Bien, hoy estamos hablando por en español. And if you're like most people, you speak and then someone, you know, you'll, you'll try for por, you'll try for para, and you feel like at best you're only ever guessing. You can, you know, you only get it right 50% of the time because, you know, there's just two por and para. But so what I want to do this week and next week is help you line out some specific uses of por and para. So today we're looking at por and I want to share some different meanings of por beyond for. So let's take a look at some different things that por actually means in Espanol. So los significados de por. This isn't all of them, it's just a handful, all right? So, of course, for is the primary use, but there's all sorts of uses of for, and, uh, and we'll see some. Because of is another use of por, see? Y through, por can mean through, por can mean by, it can mean in, and it can mean per. Okay, so let's take a look at some ejemplos. Unos ejemplos of por, meaning all of these things. Okay, tome dos pastillas por la mañana todos los días. So, super easy, typical uh, instruction for medications, right? Take two pills in the morning every day. So in this case, por means in. So it, when you're talking general time frames, por la mañana, por la tarde, por la noche, is much more common than saying en la mañana, en la tarde, en la noche, okay? But you can say en also, okay? Es bueno hacer ejercicio cinco días por semana. It's good to do exercise five days a week or five days per week. So in este contexto, por means per. Pasamos un catéter por la vena hasta el corazón. So we pass a catheter through the veins to the heart or until the heart. So por en este caso is through. Okay? Antes de alcanzar su deducible, hay que pagar por las consultas. So before reaching your deductible, you have to pay for your visits. Consultas is the common word in Spanish to talk about doctor's visits. We don't really say too much in Espanol, visitar el doctor, it's consultar con el doctor, and una consulta, el consultorio is the office. Okay, bien. So pagar por las consultas, to pay for. No podemos iniciar quimioterapia todavía por el nivel de células blancas. We can't start chemo still because of, por in this case, because of el nivel, the level of células blancas. Okay, bien. And un ejemplo más. Espere aquí por unos minutitos. Vuelvo pronto. Wait here for just a few minutes. I'll be back soon or I return soon. So here, por is for a duration of time, okay? So <clears throat> this kind of seems like por could mean anything, <laughs> I know, but there is an acronym, it's DREAMS. And this acronym is gonna help you uh, sort out the uses of por. And then for next week, I've got another acronym for para, okay? So DREAMS. 
The first three we're going to look in this slide. Okay, so D is duration. So anytime you're talking about a duration, whether that's an amount of time, like minutes, days, months, years, if you're saying four in a particular uh, length of time or duration, it's always going to be poor. It will never be para. Okay, so por ejemplo, for example. La medicina alivia el dolor por cuatro a seis horas. So the medicine alleviates the pain for four to six hours. Okay, so it's a duration of time. Otro ejemplo. El adicto no ha usado drogas por dos meses. The addict hasn't used drugs for two months. Okay. The R is reason. So in a sense, it means because of. Okay. Um, the reason that something is happening. Ella llamó a la doctora por los efectos secundarios que tenía. So she called the doctor because of the side effects she was having. Okay? ¿Por qué tenemos que esperar? So we know the question why is por qué. Really, literally, what we're asking is for what reason? Okay? Por qué. That's why por qué means why. ¿Por qué tenemos que esperar? Why do we have to wait? For what reason do we have to wait? The first E of our acronym G DREAMS is exchange. So anytime you're trading, swapping, or changing something for something else, you're going to use POR. Here are a couple of examples. <clears throat> Necesitamos cambiar esta venda sucia por otra limpia. We need to change this dirty bandage for a clean one, okay? La mamá no paga por los quehaceres, son contribuciones. <laughs> so the mom doesn't pay for chores, they're contributions. <laughs> My wife started this a you know, uh, few months ago with our kids. We've never paid them to do their chores, but she just started calling them contributions uh, earlier this year, maybe late last year. And uh, our son, the 14-year-old total snark mobile, he's just like, yeah, contributions. Why don't you just call them chores, mom? Why don't you just call them slave labor? <laughs> anyway, okay, la una no paga por, doesn't pay for, okay? Que haces? Okay, un acronimo, dreams, okay. EMS, the second half of our acronym now. The second E is emotion. So happy for, nervous, worried, and uh, these are always going to be poor. La mamá está muy nerviosa por la cirugía. So the mom is nervous about or nervous for the surgery, okay? Pero su hija no se preocupa por nada, but her daughter doesn't worry about anything. Okay, so here, poor in emotion. The M is mode. So by, through, via, um, we're always going to use poor. Hay que tomar esta medicina por boca. So por boca, not por, um, uh, a ver, what would be some other, por la vena, by, by the vein, or por suero, by uh, IV. Por boca, okay? No podemos dársela por suero. We can't give it to you by IV, okay? Substitution <clears throat> es la última, the S. So, on behalf of or for someone, okay? Y en este contexto, Juan cumpleaños hoy. Juan uh, is, is having a birthday today, así que estoy trabajando por él. So I'm working for him. He doesn't have to go to work. I'm substituting for him. Now, normally the verb work for, to work for someone or work for a company is to trabajar para. So when it's your occupation, no trabajo para hospital. Yo trabajo para Common Ground International. Uh, or trabajo para una clinica privada. Or trabajo para... Whatever, okay? So, trabajar para is your employment situation. Here, I'm working in substitution for Juan because it's his birthday. Es importante abogar por la justicia y por los derechos humanos. 
So it is important to abogar por, advocate for, la justicia y por los derechos humanos and for human rights. Okay, so in exchange, or no, excuse me, on behalf of, on behalf of, okay? Bien. Now, I have an incredible song for you, okay? <clears throat> I know you like songs. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sing it for you once and just so you can hear it and then you can join me, okay? It is, to a very well-known tune, the tune of Happy Birthday. <laughs> If you've ever had a class with me, I swear, 99% of my students are totally embarrassed for me as I'm in front of them singing. Okay, to the tune of Happy Birthday, here we go. It goes like this. Pray for, pay for, thank for, for the sake of motive, in exchange for cause duration, by and through for use poor. <laughs> okay, sing it with me once. <clears throat> I, uh, I sort of... I peeked out there on the in exchange for, so we'll do it again. Okay, you ready? It goes like this. Pray for, pay for, thank for, for the sake of motive, in exchange for cost duration, <laughs> buy it through for you, poor. Okay, all right, we'll get Let's practice a little bit. <clears throat> Not the song. We'll practice with some basic phrases. Okay, so you don't need to pay for this consult today. Remember the word for a consult? It's actually a cognate, the same in Espanol, consulta, okay? Okay, you don't need usted or tú. Let's go with usted. No necesita pagar por esta consulta hoy. Pagar por, pay for, yeah? <clears throat> you take this antibiotic for five days. Now, it's not a command, it's not tome, we're just saying usted toma, okay? Antibiotic is antibiotico. All right, so, usted toma este antibiotico por cinco días. Continuamos. It's a pill, so you take it by mouth. Here's that uh, mode or via by mouth. It's a pill, pastilla. So, es una pastilla. Así que la toma por boca. When you say so in Spanish, like therefore, you're going to go with así que. Okay, it's a good one to know. It's, um, if you haven't heard it before, commit it to memory because you use it all the time. Es una pastilla. Así que la toma por boca. Now notice, you take it por boca. Here it's la toma por boca. The la comes before. But here's what English speakers have a problem with. This is an object. You take it. Not it takes you or it takes five days or it takes whatever. It's you take it. That's important because it can never be a subject in Spanish. When it in English is the subject, we just use third person. So for example, it is big, es grande, no lo es grande or la es grande. You only use lo or la with a verb when you're, someone else is doing the action to something else. Does that make sense? It will never be a subject in Spanish. So lo or la can't be a subject. You'll never say lo es grande. It just doesn't make sense. You just stick with es grande, but tomar or la toma, or tomar la, por boca, okay? Bien, continuamos. Your heart pumps blood through your body. Ooh, pumps, that's an interesting word. Kind of tricky if you've never heard it. It is, su corazón bombea sangre por su cuerpo. So this is through, throughout your body. Bombea. Bombear is the verb to pump. And if you've ever heard the word for a firefighter, bombero, now you know why they're called bomberos, because, you know, pumper trucks, ¿verdad? Okay, continuamos. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for loving my song, is what this should have been. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Gracias por su paciencia. Gracias por su paciencia. All right, well, that's it for today. Next week, we're going to look at para 
and another acronym to help you understand the uses of PADA. Until then, make some time to celebrate the moms in your life. And uh, if you're a mom, thanks again. Uh, y gracias por aprender español conmigo. Juntos mejoramos comunidades. Para más información, más español, head over to the website, carlgrinternational.com. Hasta luego. Thank you for joining me today on this video of Yernes lesson. I wanted to invite you to join our community. If you're not a member of the Facebook group already, that I deliver these live lessons in on most every Friday and also point you to the website where you can find a bunch more information about medical Spanish, whether that be courses or free materials for you or finding a private tutor to work with you online or face to face and also let you know about some amazing Spanish immersion programs, either you as a medical person or your significant other as working in some other industry or your family. If you want to improve your Spanish and you have time and budget to go do some travel, our programs are pretty amazing. I think it'd be fun to work with you. And finally, if you have some document work at your clinic or at your hospital or within your setting that needs to be professionally translated, shoot me a message upload your document to us and we can get you a quick quote and help you out with your uh, Spanish language documents as well. Have a great day.